In this video, I'm going to respond to a Natruna video. Now, you probably have no idea who Natruna are, as they're a sneaky bunch, but Natruna run a website called True Torah Jews, and they're actually a front organization for Satmar, you know, the hugely anti-Israel Hasidic sect? Their spokesman, Rabbi Yaakov Shapiro, recently made a video about Jerusalem, which I'd like to respond to. But before doing that, I'd like to remind all of our viewers to remain civil, as although we may not agree with Satmar, they're still our brothers, and the Jewish people have enough enemies without turning on each other. This video was made L'Shem Shemayim, and not as an attack against Satmar. So let's see what the rabbi says. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. No, no. I was with him until he said the eternal capital of the Jewish people. President Trump has the right to make whatever foreign policy he wants, and if he feels that Miami Beach is best to recognize as the capital of Israel, that's his business, he can do it. But once he starts talking about the Jewish people, now he's encroaching upon religion, and now that's my domain. There is absolutely no political relationship between the Jewish people and Jerusalem. It's merely a holy city. The Jewish people don't have a capital. We never had a capital. Countries have capitals. States have capitals. That's the definition of a capital. Capital, dictionary, noun, the most important city or town of a country or region. Now the Jewish people are not a country or region. The Jewish people are a religious community. We pray towards Jerusalem, but we relate to Jerusalem only as a holy city, not as a political capital city of the Jewish people. Not as a political capital city of the Jewish people. So the rabbi made the claim that there's no political relationship between the Jewish people and Jerusalem, and that it isn't our capital city. Well, seeing as religion is your domain, rabbi, let's consult the good book. Now, I don't know what you're reading, but in the book of Samuel, it describes King David unifying Israel 3,000 years ago. After doing this, his first act as king was to establish Jerusalem as its geographical capital city. Now before all you atheists remind us that you don't care what it says in some Jewish book, this isn't just scripture, this is tangible history. You can actually visit the archaeological remains of King David's city in Jerusalem today. The city was more than just the geographical capital of the Kingdom of Israel, it was the spiritual capital of the Jewish people. Three times a year the Jewish people used to go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem from wherever they lived in the world. Just like the Muslims today go on pilgrimage or Hajj to Mecca in Saudi Arabia. The Talmud states that the Sanhedrin was seated in Jerusalem. Now you may be asking what is the Sanhedrin and why am I mentioning it? Well the Sanhedrin was like the Jewish parliament and the judges that sat on it defined the law of the land which would make Jerusalem not only the geographical and spiritual capital of the Jewish people but also the political capital of the Jewish people. While Jerusalem has always had significance to people around the world, it wasn't the world's holy city, but rather the geographical, political and spiritual capital of the Jewish people. A couple of years ago, the Pope went to visit Netanyahu and Netanyahu's bragging to the Pope, this is where Jesus lived in this land and he spoke Hebrew here. So the Pope corrected him. The Pope said, no, Aramaic. And he, he, Pope was right, and Netanyahu, was so, Netanyahu says, yeah, yeah, but he understood Hebrew. Well, you know, maybe he did, but, but Hebrew was, was never the national language of the Jewish people. But Hebrew was, was never the national language of the Jewish people. Shut the front door. Did you just claim that Hebrew was never the national language of the Jewish people? Mate, seriously, do you think King David spoke Yiddish? What are you talking about? Literally every archaeological artifact that we find in Israel from the Jewish people has ancient Hebrew inscriptions and not just religious artifacts but everything from seals to everyday correspondence. Take this mundane inscription about a water system or this ancient Hebrew letter to a military commander, all in Hebrew. So why does the rabbi seem to have such a twisted perspective on basic Jewish history? Unsurprisingly, this deviant belief is not based on archaeological evidence, but a theological mistake. In the 60s, the Satmar Rebbe made the absurd claim that the ancient Jewish people only used Hebrew for learning and for praying, but that they conversed in Aramaic. 
Well, the Jewish Bible actually states the opposite. King Hezekiah was an ancient Jewish king who ruled from Jerusalem. At a time when he was at war with the Assyrians, an Assyrian ambassador was sent with a message for the Jews of Jerusalem. He chose to deliver this message in Hebrew and not in his own tongue, which was Aramaic. King Hezekiah's Jewish officials asked him to stop speaking in Hebrew and instead address them in Aramaic so that the common Jews wouldn't understand. So if the common Jews wouldn't understand Aramaic, but they would understand Hebrew, this suggests that the spoken language at the time was Hebrew and not Aramaic as the rabbis claiming. Later on, Aramaic did actually become the spoken language of the Jewish people, but this was after over a thousand years of Hebrew being the national language. Now, there's a verse which Rabbeinu Hananel quotes from the Jerusalem Talmud, which literally destroys the entire Satmar religion. He writes that every person who settles permanently in the land of Israel, eats hull and impurity, speaks Hebrew and says the Shema morning and evening, is promised a share in the world to come. Did you catch that, Rabbi? Every Jew that lives in Israel and speaks Hebrew will be rewarded. Not every Jew that lives in New York and speaks Yiddish. Your hatred of Zionism has literally made you delusional. It's causing you to make ridiculous claims like Hebrew was never the national language of the Jewish people. People think that Israel is some kind of continuation of a Jewish uh, government. And... People think that Israel is some kind of continuation of a Jewish uh, government. And... Yes, Rabbi, we do. You know when you pray three times a day, like every other Jew, to rebuild Jerusalem and return to Israel? Well, God answered that prayer. And instead of falling on your face and thanking him, you spit in his face, reject his blessing and pervert his religion. It's time to abandon your corrupt ways and rejoin the Jewish people.